Welcome to the Friendly Podcast Guide, sorting through podcasts so you don't have to. I'm Andy Smiley, and I want to help you discover the right podcast without having to listen to an entire episode. Now, let's talk podcasts. Hi, everybody. My favorite way to get the news is, surprise, surprise, via podcast. As someone who used to work in the news industry, I know that all news organizations have some sort of bias. It just comes with being human, which is why I try to listen to a couple of news podcasts every day to make sure I'm getting the full picture. Host Erica Mandy does a good job of covering the hard-hitting news, but also covers the fun stuff that's a bit lighter. Before we dive into the conversation I had with Erica, let me give you a few more details about the show. The show description is... The day's news made fast, fair, and fun in 10 minutes. Erica Mandy is like a trusted friend who always gets both sides. She's a veteran journalist who was tired of talking heads, alarmist headlines, and monotone voices, so she created something different. The Newsworthy is packed with politics, tech, business, and entertainment from a variety of sources brought together in one convenient place and with a fun twist. The length of each episode is about 10 minutes long, Erica never uses vulgar language, but she does talk about the news of the day, which you may not always want your kids to hear. The show is ongoing. It drops every weekday morning with a special Saturday episode that dives in a little bit deeper to a topic that has something to do with either the news that week or that time of year. So they do vary quite a bit. Before we learn more about the vibe of the Newsworthy, we're going to take a quick break to talk about bookshop.org. I love local bookshops. I love being able to browse the books and hold them in my hands and read a little bit and figure out which one's going to be the best fit for me. But right now, with three littles all under the age of five, I have not been able to make it to many local bookstores, but I want them to still be around in a couple of years when I am able to more easily get to my local bookstore. So, I was so happy when I found bookshop.org. Bookshop.org is a great way for you to buy books online, but also support local bookstores. You can find a specific local bookstore that you would like to support, and they will receive the full profit off your order, or your order will contribute to an earnings pool that will be evenly distributed among independent bookstores. You can see some of my favorite books for me and my kiddos by going to my affiliate link at bookshop.org slash shop slash FPG. I'll also put the link in the show notes so you can just click it there. Now we get to hear from Erica about how her experience in the news industry made her want to start her own news podcast. Erica, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I'm really excited to talk to you today. I am so happy to be here. Thank you for having me on. Now, first off, I got to hear, I've read about you, but I would love for you to tell me a little bit about why you started The Newsworthy. Yes. So I was a TV news reporter for over 10 years. um, And I kept hearing from people that news was too depressing and time consuming and biased and overwhelming. And frankly, as a news reporter, I was feeling like it was all doom and gloom too. And it took a toll on me personally as well. And so I was thinking about how can I create something for people that's going to at least help fix those problems while still allowing them to stay informed and stay part of the daily conversation. And I saw what was happening with podcasting and the trend going up even four years ago before I started this. And I wanted to be on the forefront of how people were getting their news. And I wanted to try to help people stay informed without all of the extra anxiety and anger that comes along with it often. I completely agree. I feel like we need We need something that gives us the news so that we can be informed, but does it in a way that isn't so overwhelming and depressing. (laughs) Yes, exactly. That's exactly what it is. We need to be like, the world isn't all sad and doom and gloom, but I feel like the news kind of portrays it that way sometimes. Yeah. And so that's really our goal with the newsworthy is to tell you, yes, some of the sad stories that are happening, but do it in a way that is not overly alarming and is combined with other things that are going on that is a reminder that it's not just the bad stuff and that you don't have to sit there for hours looking at it. You can be informed. You can dig a little deeper into the stories that interest you the most if you want after the show. But our goal is to give you that roundup so that you know and can move on with the day. Because I think, you know, I always say don't sit in the tragedy. If you're sitting there watching hours and hours of it, you're not going to want to leave your house. (laughs) But if you know what's going on and then you move on with your day, you can maybe take 
an action, whether that's you want to donate to something or you want to write your lawmaker, great. But sitting there watching it for hours is not going to help anybody. Definitely. And that is one thing that I love, especially as a young mom, I feel like I can get my news, but I can get it quick and then move on. You know, I can, and then start, you know, watching the, the kid show that the kids are watching or turn on <laughs> right. a kid podcast or whatever, but I get my, I get my news of the day first. And can you tell me what would you consider the feeling of your show or like, how do people describe the feeling of your show? Well, our tagline is fast, fair, and fun. And that I think really sums it up. And just to briefly explain each one fast is it's about 10 minutes each day, fair and unbiased. My team and I really go out of our way to pull from multiple sources, try to bring multiple perspectives into every single story. And then the fun part is just about bringing a casual, friendly voice to the news, not being overly alarming and having that variety of stories. So we talk about 10 to 12 news stories in those 10 minutes. So you're getting everything from politics all the way to entertainment and the award show that's happening tonight or something. Definitely. Definitely. And I do. And I do love that it is short, but you do. You kind of give a well-rounded look at the day or yes, like what's coming up. I love that. And even within each story that we talk about, even though it's short, we really spend a lot more time than 10 minutes on each story so that we're telling it to you in a very clear, digestible way. My hope is that you're not having to rewind the show to understand what the heck we're talking about. I think a lot of news outlets sometimes forget that people aren't paying quite as close of attention as their reporters are to everything that's happening in the news. And it can be really confusing. Like, I know I've heard of filibuster before, but what does that mean again? And <laughs> so it's it's not that people aren't smart. It's that they have a lot going on. And so it's my job to clearly explain what they need to know, leave out the stuff they don't need to know and explain it all in a really clear, digestible format. Yes, truly. And I'm very grateful that you take your job seriously because I do. I agree. I feel like it is digestible and easy to hear while I'm trying to make breakfast or whatever, whatever's going on in the background. I can still, I still understand what's happening in the world after I listen to your show. And one of my favorite parts truly of your show is your Saturday. Do you call them Saturday classics? No, I can't remember. Special edition Saturday. That's what it is. Special edition Saturdays. So do you have a favorite uh, one of those episodes? Because I feel like you don't really have a favorite everyday episode probably because it changes every day. But those Saturdays when you get to dive a little bit deeper, do you have a favorite one of those or like maybe a couple? I think I really like the variety that we offer. So, you know, sometimes I have questions about like we, I just did an interview about at home COVID-19 tests and what we need to know about them. And I think clarifying some of that is really important, but at the same time for Valentine's day, we're going to be talking about, you know, the dating trends for 2022. And so I just am all about having it all. Like we don't have to stay in our lane when it comes to whether it's serious news or fun news. And um, so, you know, things stand out to me about like our coverage about COVID-19 and how we talk to the first Broadway star in a wheelchair and her experience growing up and, and being, you know, being the first one to win a Tony award. And so I think all of them have their place in my mind. And I know that's kind of a, (laughs) I apologize for not choosing one favorite, but I think that variety is what's important to me about it. Totally. Well, that makes sense to me. I do. I do love, I do love the variety as well. I feel like you never really know what you're going to get and it's kind of (laughs) exciting to figure it out. Um, Would you consider your show kid ear friendly um, as far as, cause I know, I know that like there's no swear words or anything, but I feel like sometimes you cover harder topics. Yes. It is. I think it's an individual parent decision. I I have heard from mental health experts that it's better to hear something, even if it's tragic, than to see the images of it, especially for children. And so I think if you're trying to get that news without having the TV on, it's a good alternative. I hear from a lot of parents who do listen on the way to school or when they are you know, preparing breakfast. But I will say there are usually one or two stories in there where we will talk about something that is, you know, the, the biggest story of the day, which, which can be a school shooting or something like that. And so 
it's kind of up to each parent uh, what they feel like their threshold is for for their children. And if they plan to kind of have that extra conversation and maybe it's also skimming, you know, our show notes to see what the stories are before you hit play that day. Definitely. I agree. I feel like you kind of have to be ready for an extra conversation if you don't have your headphones in. Right. Right. And sometimes that conversation is is needed and warranted. But for little, little kids, maybe we're not quite ready to have those conversations yet. Yeah. And I do think we, again, have that variety though. So if you want to maybe listen to the first half with your headphones in, and then you can pull the headphones out for the second half of the show, we talk about everything from video game companies to, uh, you know, celebrities, and it's usually a little easier for the children in the second half of the show. I would totally agree with that. Yeah. Um, and what time do your episodes drop? By four in the morning, Eastern time. Okay. So basically overnight. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, I usually pick them up around seven or eight in the morning, but I, but I figured it was much earlier than that. Um, and then where can people find you? So everything about the show and about me is on the newsworthy.com and you can find our social media from there, but across social media platforms, we're at newsworthy pod. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much for talking to me and, and letting us dive into your show a little bit more. Well, thank you for listening and recommending it. I so appreciate it. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you want to hear about more podcasts, please follow or subscribe on your podcast app of choice. Just a reminder, if you want to buy books online and support your local bookstore, you can do that on bookshop.org slash shop slash FPG. Talk to you soon. Hello. Hi. Holy cow. Hi, everyone. My favorite way to get podcast.